Perfect. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alte Piaman. I'm a first year postgraduate student in the Department of Periodontology and Oral Surgery here in, in, in Liège, in Belgium. Uh, thank you for the EFP for this great opportunity. And I'm very glad to present to you today my topic of the new EFP guidelines regarding the treatment of stage one, two, three periodontitis. And I hope also to keep you uh, guys entertained this afternoon uh, because we're just after the break and we're getting close uh, to uh, the end of the symposium. So let's just get started. So as you noticed, our topic is about the supportive periodontal care. And as oral health professionals, we all have to face the situation when our patient is periodontally stabilized and we ask ourselves, when should we recall this patient in order to keep an eye on his motivation and to make sure that the situation remains stable? Some of these patients need more than others to be held by the hand. But now the real question is to know what does a particular patient need? At what frequency do we have to recall this particular patient? Is it every three, four, six months? Is it every year? Fortunately, today, with the help of the guidelines, we will discuss these aspects and we will have answers to our questions. So here we have a quick overview of our presentation. We will start with a brief introduction, then we will approach the two major questions that were asked, asked and answered here in the guidelines. The first question is adherence to supportive periodontal care visits important? The second one, at what intervals should supportive periodontal care be scheduled? And finally, we will see how we can implement these EFP guidelines in our daily practice. So let's get into it with the introduction. So as we all know, after an active periodontal therapy, successfully treated periodontitis patients may fall in one of two diagnostic categories. The first one is treated periodontitis patient with a reduced but healthy periodontium. We have here a bleeding on probing inferior than 10% of the sites and a probing pocket depth inferior or equal to four millimeters. This group is at a risk of recurrence of periodontitis. The second group is treated periodontitis patient with gingival inflammation. Here we have a bleeding on probing superior than 10%. And in this group, we have a risk of progression of the, of the disease. So both groups require a specifically designed supportive periodontal care program consisting of a monitoring of systemic and periodontal health. We should also in this program reinforce our oral hygiene instructions, a professional mechanical plaque removal and a subgingival localized instrumentation at residual pockets are also of major importance. In this program, we also have to motivate our patient to keep a continuous risk factor control, for example, the issues of the diabetes and the smoking habits. The supportive periodontal care program has to be customized to the patient needs and the appointment duration should be between 45 and 60 minutes according to the EFP recommendation. What is also important here in the supportive periodontal care program is the behavioral changes. This aspect will be discussed later on in the program, but to summarize it, we can say that the patient has to be compliant with our oral hygiene instructions, and also he has to follow a healthy lifestyle. So this brings us to our first question, is adherence to supportive periodontal care visits important? Yes, of course. And according to the new guidelines, it is strongly recommended. We have here a strong consensus about this guideline. So adherence to the supportive periodontal care is crucial for two important points. The first one is the long-term periodontal stability, but also for further improvements in periodontal status. Many studies, especially those undertook by Costa in 2014, showed that an irregular compliance to this supportive periodontal care program is related to greater rates of tooth loss and greater rates of disease progression. Now, knowing that the supportive periodontal care is important, at what intervals should we schedule these periodontal care visits? 
Here, the EFP guidelines recommends to make the visits at three to maximum 12 months and that the intervals have to be tailored according to the patient risk profile, but also according to the periodontal conditions that we obtain after the active periodontal therapy. Here also we have a grade A recommendation, which means that it's strongly recommended and we have an unanimous uh, consensus. However, regarding the periodontal surgery, other authors support the evidence that a meticulous supportive periodontal care program is mandatory to maximize the surgical outcome and that the visits here have to be every three months to sufficiently control periodontitis progression after a periodontal surgery. So let's see now how we can implement these EFP guidelines in our daily practice. So here in our daily clinical practice in Liège, after doing the whole active periodontal therapy, we go for first a stabilization of the progression of the periodontal disease, then we begin the supportive periodontal therapy. And after doing that, should we recall the patient at four to, to 12 months? Yes, yes, according to the guidelines, that's what we should do. But, and also as recommended by the guidelines, we need to keep in mind that we have uh, the need for an individual risk assessment to optimize our follow-up. To do so, we can use the, the periodontal risk assessment, which is uh, a, a, a tool that the Department of Periodontology at the University of Bern in Switzerland made it possible to use it online on the site, and you have the link here down below in the slide. So we have here a useful tour, tool where we can fill the gaps with the personal information of the patient, and it gives us the periodontal risk, and the suggested recall interval uh, according to it. So here, for example, we have a, a medium periodontal risk with a suggested recall interval of six months. Let me just show you here quickly two clinical cases where we had to adapt our recall interval according to the clinical situation. So here on the left, we have a patient diagnosed with a generalized stage three grade B periodontitis. And on the, on, the, on the right, we have a generalized stage three grade C periodontitis. Both pictures were took at the end of the active period, periodontal, periodont, periodontal treatment. And we have actually stabilized here the periodontal disease, as you can see it here in both periodontal charts. So we used our periodontal risk assessment tool. So for the first case, we can see that we have a low periodontal risk. So one uh, appointment per year is sufficient for this patient. On the opposite side here on the right, we have a high periodontal risk. And in this situation, we have to see the patient much often and we need to make a recall every three months. So we see that we have to make an individualization of our clinical cases to uh, optimize the follow-up. So to conclude, and what can we remember from this part of the guidelines and what can we rem remember from this presentation? First, supportive periodontal care is a crucial step for periodontal stability. And as we said just before, we need to individual individualize our clinical cases and we can use the uh, periodontal risk assessment. But the major stake here is to keep the follow-up. In fact, independently of the risk that we are facing, we need to stay available for our patient to follow them and to keep, and to keep them aware of their periodontal condition. Well, with this, I say thank you for listening and thank you for your kind attention.